What's up, geeks and gamers? It's old, and that was for you, Uche. Coming back with another video, and today we're gonna be talking about the box office breakdown for this weekend of December thirteenth to December fifteenth, with the big film of this weekend being Jumanji three or Jumanji, Jumanji. What did I just say? That Jumanji, the next level by Sony Pictures, taking in sixty point one million dollars in the domestic market with Frozen 2 now in its fourth week with only a 45% drop only losing 270 theaters being still at 4,000 theaters making 19.1 million Knives Out by Ryan Johnson making 9.25 million with only a 35% drop in its third week so still doing very strong Ryan Johnson please keep on doing those indie films and stay away from Star Wars and we will be just right on track. Richard Jewell, which had a limited release with $5 million and Black Christmas by Universal, another case of Go Go oh, Go Broke with $4.42 million. And oh yes, we have a lot to talk about there. So let's start off with the top with Jumanji The Next Level making $145.8 million. So this is a very strong start for the the sequel, really, to the new age, a new era of Jumanji, but technically the third film in the Jumanji franchise, seeing that the first film that came out, or rather the first of the sequels that came out a couple years ago, was a direct sequel, or at least was directly connected to the 1995 version with Robin Williams, so this film is doing very well. Have not seen it myself, might try and go see it sometime today or this week, since currently as a teacher we're going into an exam week, which is going to mean I have a lot more free time to see some stuff, but this is a very strong start for it. I almost had forgotten that the first film or the film that came out <laughs> it's hard for me to say it because in my mind it is a new uh, it's a new film it's a new franchise or rather it's a new take on the film even though it is technically within continuity but the film that came out two years ago I forgot Welcome to the Jungle ended up making over 900 million dollars at the worldwide box office and so it looks like this film might not reach that level exactly but is still doing strong enough to justify its existence, and I could see it easily leading to yet another film in this franchise, because if studios are going to keep making money, they'll keep making the movies. I hear if you like the first one, you'll like this one, or if you like the second one, technically, you'll like this one, so we'll see how that goes when I eventually go see it. Frozen 2, which is not a good movie, and yet people still go to see it, has now crossed the billion-dollar mark officially with $1.032 billion. That is a crap ton of money, and it's only in its fourth week, and we are currently entering into the holiday Christmas season, so you're going to see this film make even more money. As I said, what likely will end up being the end of its run is going to be around $1.4 billion dollars I would imagine in my metrics for it it's going to be roughly around that area it could be higher than that could be lower than that but you're looking at a film that's probably going to top out at being in the top three highest grossing films of 2019 and probably will get there before the year 2019 is over based on how strong this film is performing especially in that international marketplace making 666 million dollars which I think is a sign 666 sign of the beast yes indeed Yes, indeed, Disney. I think that's a sign of what you are all about. But Knives Out, personally, I mean, are there Frozen 2? I don't really think is a very good film, but I know that everyone agrees with my take on that. That is just me. Knives Out, the film by Ryan Johnson, is a box office success. I wouldn't say it's a box office smash because it's not going to be making, you know, hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars, but for it to make $142.4 million on roughly a 40 or, uh, yeah, about a $40 million budget or so, is really not all that bad. That means it costs $60 million to actually both promote, or rather both to promote and to produce the film. It only gets 60% or so of that box office take, and it might actually be more than that, seeing that this is a much more limited release and it's only coming out in certain countries, but still very, very strong showing for definitely in making the giant profits, millions of dollars profit in this range. And as you can see here, it did, did pretty well in China, you know, retroactively or rather retrospectively making 13.7 million dollars which actually might even be more than what the last star wars film did in china which i think should speak volumes as to why this man should stay away from star wars richard jewell the film that's getting a lot of hate in the media because it's of its portrayal of a female reporter and the way that the, she's portrayed might be true might not be true but it's a fictional telling or rather it's a dramatization of a actual real life event so what else were you expecting than some type of changes or some type of stresses and, and uh, character developments that might not be the exact same 
as they are in real life. This is not a documentary, and so if you want that kind of stuff, you might want to wait for the documentary. I'm sure there is one out, but if you're not waiting for it, why are you complaining? Obviously, I think it's the media just trying to say, don't see this movie because it's just going to make you hate us and distrust us even more than you already do, so why would we want you to go see that? And so, of course, they're all up in arms, joining together, joining forces, supporting their media brethren, and trying to get people to not see this film. I will be going to see this film in spite of that nonsense, and I would recommend you go see it too because I hear it's very good. I hear that Clint Eastwood actually did a very good job with this film. He has been very hit and miss lately, but apparently this is a hit out of the park with great performances and a great story for those that maybe don't know the history of Richard Jewell himself. Black Christmas is another case of go, well, go broke because this is a movie that is all woke. Apparently, this film focuses more on its social messaging about strong female empowerment than on actually telling a good horror film. The production budget, though, was around $5 million, which really isn't all that bad, meaning the overall marketing for the film would have been roughly around $2.5 million, meaning it cost about $7.5 million to make. So you look at those numbers and you think to yourself, okay, yeah, so it, it can make its money back. Maybe. I can't see how the second weekend for this is going to be very good. Of course, if it is, I will let you all know. But we're looking at a film here that in all likelihood, even though it only costs $5 million to make, which is nothing, might actually end up losing out on some money. But we'll have to wait and see on that one for its second and third weekend. But no one's going to see it. Everyone that has seen it says it's terrible, so I can't imagine its second weekend is going to be very good. Joker, just talk about that one a little bit, has made now $1.059 billion, so this has now surpassed a Disney film, which was Aladdin, of course, which is really sad when you think about it, because even though this has surpassed Aladdin, it is still not in the top five highest grossing films of 2019, because a lot of crappy Disney films made a crap ton of money. And lastly, Ford v. Ferrari is getting ever so closer to the $200 million worldwide box office mark, which it really needs to hit if it is going to expect to break even and make some money as well at the box office. Just looking at the raw box office numbers and not on the possible deals they've had with Coca-Cola and other advertisement companies where obviously there's product placement in their movies. So you could say that they've made up some of the money they're not making in the box office from those deals and from those groups. But we don't have those numbers, and so all we can look at are the raw numbers in front of us and determine how much it cost, how much they spent, etc. So it's almost at $100 million here uh, in the United States and Canada, the, the domestic market. And it's made $86.4 million overseas. It's really sad that this film has not really taken off as much in the overseas market as I think it should because it is a very solid film. And I'm going to continue every week to talk about it until it stops making money because I think it's a good, solid film, one of my top but right now, I think it's in my top five, top six favorite films of 2019. And if that's any indication of whether you should see, go see it or not, I would definitely recommend it. So anyway, what are your thoughts about this? Jumanji The Next Level, have you seen it? Do you think this film is going to match or exceed the first film? I don't think it's made quite enough. The reason why the first film was so successful was because of a positive word of mouth campaign which is why when you compare the openings to both of them, you'll see some discrepancies. But it, what's going to be interesting to me is the week one and week two drop-off, especially since week two drop-off is going to be up against Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, which, as a quick update, has actually now gone up in its projected opening weekend by about $5 million. So nothing to go home about. But the top-end projection for The Rise of Skywalker right now is $225 million domestically. Now, that's the top-end, meaning that it probably will fall somewhere Somewhere closer to the middle. And I think the low end is around 185 or 190 million for its opening weekend. So we're looking at a film that likely will be around the 200 or not 195, 200 million dollar range, which is going to be about 20 million dollars less or so than the uh, than the Last Jedi was. It actually has a correction. The top end is 225 million, meaning the low end would be around 200 million or 195 million, meaning that middle range the film likely will make 205 or 210 max million dollars based on the averages. Either way, it looks like it's coming in under The Last Jedi. That's the main takeaway. Obviously, I know I'm throwing a lot of numbers at you, but the main takeaway is that it's set to make less than The Last Jedi did opening weekend. And if the word of mouth is really poor for this film, as it was for The Last Jedi, then we're looking at a movie that's going to come in well under the $1.3 billion that The Last Jedi made, meaning we're probably going to get one of the first Star Wars, main Star Wars films, obviously Solo the Star Wars Story is the first one that lost money, but one of the main ones under Disney out of the sequel trilogy, out of the Disney trilogy that will not reach the billion dollar mark. We shall have to wait and see. Let me know your thoughts about that and all the things we talked about in the comments section below. If you like this video, smash that like button, give us a subscribe. It helps us out a lot. You are all amazing and beautiful people. Have a wonderful day. And as always, God bless.